American life of two centuries ago must have been a simple thing. An individual could provide his own food, his own clothes, his transportation, and of course, he had to provide his own protection. One could do that in those days, possibly even had to do it, just to survive from day to day. But even then, there was a change in the air. Possibly it began here, with the automobile. Whatever the reason, the way we live today is very much different from what it was a century ago. There are, for example, four million of us in Philadelphia, five million in and around Detroit, seven million in Chicago, 11 million in Los Angeles, 14 million in New York. And of course, there are problems some of them the ordinary day-to-day -day kind anyone would expect from a gathering of so many people. But some are specialized, the kind we hear little about until it's almost too late. One of these special problems is here, in the vast, seemingly unlimited area we call the sky. For in addition to the other uses we make of it, this is our communicating space. And it's a busy place indeed. So busy, in fact, that its use is under the complete control of our federal government. The immediate problem isn't so much the space itself as it is the distribution of that space. Television and radio, for example, occupy this much of it. Another large user is the federal government. They occupy this much of the total although there is no indication as to how and for what the space is used. Then, there are the radio amateurs, the users of radio in aircraft, in ships, and in a variety of other applications. These users, all of them, occupy this much of the total space. And finally, there are the users of two-way mobile radio for public safety, welfare, and business who occupy this much of the total. The result is this. Los Angeles Approach Control, this is Cessna 0281 Echo, 119.3, over. Springfield to car 944, 1050. 944, go ahead. Okay, now take it away. From lack of interest, lack of understanding, or perhaps from lack of foresight, this distribution of our communicating space does not work to the best advantage of all our people, especially here, in the area of the mobile radio users. Their part of the total usable space amounts to just under 5%, an almost negligible amount considering the essential jobs they're called on to perform. Who are they? What do they do? Or what is their problem? Well, it is this. Inside that tiny 5% area, 24 hours a day, every day of the year, are these communications. Car 1710, a battery victim at 3138 North California Avenue in a restaurant. Complainant's name is Flagner. Car 1711, go in on 3138 North California. 1108, suspicious auto in the alley at 13766 Leiden Avenue. We have a line down in the rear of 9138 Central. We got six calls on out of service phones already. Get to it quickly, please. District 2 to engine 5. Come in 
radio entertainment, television entertainment, federal government and all have been well provided for in the distribution of communicating space. But in doing that, the communications of mobile radio users, those each of us depends on for safety, for the growth of our economy, and for the day-to-day -day essential services we need, those users must try to communicate in less than 5% of the total space available to all. And yet, our metropolitan areas continue to grow, and this in turn places an ever-increasing load on the communicating space we've allocated to these essential users. Indications of the problem we're creating are everywhere. We put more people on a given piece of land than ever before. We develop business and industry, bringing even more people to metropolitan districts all over the nation. We do provide the latest, most modern facilities for servicing and protecting our metropolitan areas. We do give them equipment, including communications equipment, but the space they need for the transmission of these communications remains less than 5% of the total. What it all means, of course, is that today, all we need is an emergency to create a problem almost beyond solution. All cars alert. Weather Bureau expects hurricane conditions inland within 24, 26 hours. <laughs> Get the hurricane signals up. We've got one coming. Race to number four. Weather Bureau reports winds up around 80 knots. It's going to be a big one. They call the Canary Bacardi. Can't for me. It's already bad out here. Race to number six. This year, your eye has a problem. Base to number one. Weather Bureau reports eye of hurricane directly overhead. Eyes large and distorted. Maybe we'll have 30 minutes of calm, but then look out. 10 4 base. Get the hook of that tree down on live oak. Stay down by base. Station 2 to fire 6. Report a dwelling on fire. Corner of live oak in the three wing. Boy, this is a mess. Stand by base. We almost just spent it. Stand by station 2. Steamed a diesel plant. We've got an intermittent overload on the main west lake. Clear or we'll fall over the line. Station two. That tree down on Live Oak Street has popped the power line. That's the cause of the fire. Number one to fire six. Stand by six. Stand by We're trying one. to get the hook to that tree. Where's that line? Fire or? six to base. Get that tree out of here. Distribution to diesel. Repeat the location of the power line. Get off the air so we can get a crew on that tree. Number one to base. Get on here. We're out of Please get off the air so we can get Where's that line crew? is disaster repeated somewhere in the land, daily, perhaps hourly? We 
didn't hear your last message. Because every tiny part of the radio space here was filled with communication. All of them essential in every sense of the word. But because the communicators were limited to 5% of the total available space, many of their messages weren't even heard. But then, these are disasters. Not necessarily representative of daily problems, especially the kind that might touch you. So picture yourself just riding through your city or your town. And then, imagine the thousands of messages in the air every moment. All designed to make life more comfortable for you. All designed to protect you and those nearest to you. Listen. District 2. One alarm fire, resident 616 quarter, engines 22 and 27 and ladder 16 responding from quarters. District 2 rolling from 5th and Main. Engine 22 on the scene, laying the line. This is a going fire. District 2 on the scene, give me a second alarm. Advise response. Attention all harbor districts. A vessel, SS Washington and Delaware, is berthed off the shore at the Pier 25 south side. Contains cargo of volatile and toxic solvents. Been told to all stations and units, expect freezing cold and rain tonight. All vehicles are on standby as of now in anticipation of snow and ice. 1124, a domestic disturbance on second floor, 3228 West Flournoy. Complainant's name is McGee. 825 to control. Report of gas in building is 1101 Sandra. Fear explosion. 770 to station 4. We're clear to restore power to circuit 14. 768 to station 2. Verify the inspector for Ridgeway paving job. Something wrong. The contractor says on the plan, <laughs> the fire hydrant shows up right in the middle of the driveway. Station 9 to 865, complaint of missed garbage pickup, unsanitary condition. 956 Hubbard, Mrs. Jones. 751 to Station 4, notify the police department that this is a major accident at 1400 Edgefield. Car hit a pole. Ambulance is already picked up. Going to St. Joseph. I got the hot wires cleared. We'll stand by until police arrive. 961 to Station 4. I got the horse tied up at Stadium in Jones. Send the horse trailer. Unable to locate owner. Station 4 to 770. Northbound red light out at 5th and Jones. 833 to Station 7. A heavy truck knocked over the street sign and fire alarm box at 14th and K. Advise the sign shop and light and signal. Just remember that as you hear these messages, some of them deadly serious, some almost humorous. They consistently represent the difference between coming home to this or to this. But let it not be due to a simple lack of communicating space, for it could, after all, happen to you. The question is, of course, what's being done? about the communicating space problem, and who is trying to correct it, and what can you do to help? Well, something is being done, and the people who are doing it need your help. shall be the purpose of this association to foster the development and progress of the art of police and public safety communication to the end that the safety of human lives, the protection of property, and the general welfare of all people may be benefited to the highest degree. By 1935, most police communications officers began to recognize the importance of two-way radio, and had formed an association which today is APCO, the Associated Public Safety Communications Officers, whose purpose is far more important than it was in 1935. At that time, two-way radio as a communicating device was only beginning to be recognized. 
today, its use is almost universal. And with that use comes the pressing need for more space to communicate in. It has, in fact, come to this. Well, our whole communication system in New York is going to depend on whether or not we have the airspace to communicate in. We need more, now. The police department of Chicago gets a call for some kind of help once every 90 seconds. We've got to have more radio channels. The brush fires here in L.A. hit us pretty hard every year. We use all our space, but it just isn't enough. I know people are moving in here faster than just about any place in the country, so what will happen in the future I just can't imagine. Unless, of course, we get more space when we need it, like right now. We've got our own police protection now out here in the suburbs, but every time another community starts doing that, we have to share our radio channels with them. But look at all the new homes. If the place keeps going like this, what will our situation be, say, five years from now? And in what metropolitan area isn't this true? St. Louis, Milwaukee, Houston, Minneapolis, Kansas City, Pittsburgh? And in what suburb isn't the same thing true? Strawberry Hill, Park Ridge, Shawnee Mission, Elm Grove, Forest Park? The problem is everywhere. In every area of this nation where people gather to work, to play, to live, Perhaps not today, but tomorrow, or the next day, or perhaps the next. All right, what's being done about it? The Associated Public Safety Communications Officers recognize the need for a change in this arrangement, a change in the distribution of the radio airspace that's available now. And they're working toward that goal. But the problem is a big one, big enough to need your help. These are the rules and regulations of the Federal Communications Commission, the agency which, among other things, is in charge of the distribution and control of communications space throughout the nation. It is here, in these regulations, that changes must be made to provide not only for today's needs, but for tomorrow's as well. Common carrier frequency also. This is Sheriff Land Mobile. This big black band is TV. Here's government and That will take action on the part of all citizens. For changes in these rules and regulations are not likely to be made just because APCO recognizes the need. Instead, the problem must be made clear to those who can bring such changes about. And that's where you can help. The redistribution of communicating space is going to take legal changes, revisions in federal laws, congressional action, and that, of course, means support for those changes. Support on the part of mayors, town councilmen, state representatives, governors, everyone associated with those who can help bring about a proper change in the law, and a substantial increase in that 5% area we've been talking about. Mayors, councilmen, representatives are people you must inform so that they may know just how serious this problem has become and how much more serious it grows with every passing day. Station 6813, block the intersection of 12 and Firestone. to 119, report shooting in the crowd at night and Firestone. To attempt to jam all these communications in such a tiny part of the available radio space is virtually a national disaster. But it is still one that can be avoided, provided, of course, you will lend your support. APCO and everyone associated with this group 
urgently asks you to do just that. Car 1615. We didn't get your last message.